back there. Now is the time to do that. I'm so glad that you're here in the Lord's house today. And uh, this is what I believe as they're being dismissed. I believe, Nettie, that there are probably some people that are still here that still have chains on them. Now, that's not a very light way to move into a sermon. But given the song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, it just makes me think of, there are probably here some people that have prayed a prayer and you're still in bondage. And what you got growing up, you got religion. And you didn't get a relationship. That's why maybe you don't like to come to the Lord's house. You got religion. And I want to tell you, I want to invite you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ today. Maybe you've said a prayer, but your life hasn't changed. Maybe you've been going to church, but your life hasn't changed. And what that says is you got religion and you didn't get a relationship. A relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords will change your life. And I want to tell you something else, believers in Christ. It is a progressive, ongoing change. We are all in the process. If you've been saved by the grace, the amazing grace of God, we're, those of you that have been saved, you're in the process of change. The Bible says you've been predestined to be conformed into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. And so that is a sanctification is what we call it. It's a continuous separation from this world. And I want to tell you something, that's what He's called us to, to continually be separated from this world. How do you think we can shine unless we're separated? You can't shine for Jesus if you're blended in. And so I want to challenge you this morning, don't be a blended believer. Amen? Don't try to blend into this world. Be separated unto God. Walk holy unto the Lord. And um, if you're a guest here this morning, uh, I'm the pastor of the church. You may, may not know me, and uh, my name is Joe Ballard. We've had everybody but the pastor up here today. Praise God. I thank the Lord for Kayla and being up here and Arla being up here and Nettie being up here and uh, all of the. That was a great choir, wasn't it? Man, I'm telling you, such, yeah, there's worship leader right there. And so, uh, hey, listen, there's still room for you. I noticed there were a few seats left up here. If, uh, if, if you're looking to be a part of the choir, if you're looking for an outlet to serve your king, come join the choir. And so I know Mark would love to receive you up there. And anyway, if you've got your Bibles, we're going to stay in here. We're going to be in the Word of God, 2 Samuel chapter 9. We're going to talk about compassion, the compassion of God. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone. There's no one exempt from this right here. You know, one of the things I, I thought about was, uh, let's, let's give a definition to compassion. What is compassion? Because you see compassion, it runs throughout the Bible. And especially we see it expressed in the person, Jesus Christ. Here's what one man said about compassion. He said, compassion is what makes a person feel pain when someone else hurts. You ever feel pain when someone else... I almost passed out when they were giving my wife an epidural. I mean, I felt it. I mean, it physically affected me. Am I right? Am I lying? I ain't lying. I, and I didn't even see them sticking the needle in her back. You know, I was just watching, but I knew, boy, there was some pain coming, and I was like, well, I'm getting hot. Compassion is what makes a person feel pain when someone else hurts. Abraham Lincoln, I don't hardly ever quote from Abraham Lincoln, but this is what he said. He said, I'm sorry for the man who can't feel the whip when it is laid on the other man's back. Sorry for the man. And, uh, you know, but I, I thought about those things, those couple of uh, quotes right there, but I thought this, compassion has to be more than just a feeling. Now, it may start with a feeling, but really God's compassion, it has to be played out. It has to be walked out, kind of like our faith. We need to follow through with our faith. And listen, I said it already. If you've been saved, but you haven't been baptized, 
follow through with your faith. Live it out. What I told uh, Bradley Dean, one of our students that went to a youth camp with us. Live out your faith, Bradley Dean. Live it out. And he's here this morning. I praise God for him being here. And this is one of the ways that you live out that faith. You, you find a community of believers to walk with. They might not, listen, they're not perfect people, but at least there are people that assemble on a consistent basis and they consistently worship God and they look up to God and they try to follow the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something, if you want to walk out your faith, you've got to link up with a community of believers. But you know what I thought about compassion uh, on, on top of that, and compassion needs an outlet. And we've got outlets for compassion. Hospitals are outlets for compassion. I believe that a lot of nurses have... How many nurses do we have in here? I know we've got some. There's two. They're at work. No, they're not in the Lord's house. We, I saw two hands right there. But you know, the hospitals are an outlet for people with, with compassion. I, I thought about also orphanages. You know, we've gone to a lot of orphanages on our mission trips to Mexico and Romania, places like that, and we, man, you talk about something that will draw compassion out. If, if you don't have, does anybody struggle with compassion? Y'all better come on, come on, Lord, looking at you. This side's all good over here. <laughs> no, hey, listen, listen, here's the truth of the matter. We all struggle with compassion from time to time. Every one of us. None of us have compassion just flowing like a free river through us, you know. But that's what God's intention is. God's intention is for His compassion. Once He puts the Spirit of Jesus inside of us, His intention is for His compassion for people to flow through us like a river all the time. I want to tell you something. Mine gets clogged up every now and then. You ever just want to twist off on somebody? Where's your compassion? Well, it's kind of lacking right there, isn't it? We're going to look at compassion this morning. Jesus Christ... He exemplified the man, the life of compassion. And all the things that he did, the way that he reached down to people and encouraged people, lifted them up and delivered people from pitiful, pitiful conditions. And listen, there are people today just like that in pitiful, pitiful conditions that still need somebody. You need to be an agent of God's compassion, going out and reaching out to people, lifting them up, encouraging them in a walk with Jesus Christ. We find also in the Bible, not just Jesus, but we find King David to exemplify compassion God's compassion also. And you see it right here in 2 Samuel chapter 9. The question before we read is this right here. Oh yeah, this is, this is just before. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a summary in chapter 8, at the end of chapter 8, about the administration, the reigning of, of King David. And then uh, in chapter 11, of course, you remember that's when, uh, 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 when, when the, the tr armies was going out in that season and David decided to stay back and that's when he sinned with Bathsheba. It's right before that that David reaches out with a wonderful uh, love and compassion to a man named Mephibosheth. The question before reading is this right here. How is your compassion? Are you compassionate for, towards people? Are you loving towards people? Are you showing God's compassion? Or is your compassion clogged up somewhere? Well, we're going to find out today. Let's all stand. We're going to read these verses. Starting in verse 1, chapter 9, 2 Samuel. Now David said, now there's, there's the same question two times in here. And any time you're reading the Bible, you see the same question two times. Maybe you see it three times. Maybe you see the same word in a, in a chapter three or four times. Listen, you need to clue in on that right there. And this is the question, is there anyone, still anyone, who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. And so when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. The king said to him, uh, Here's the question, Is there still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. Now stop right there just for a minute. Now you've got to know this, the relationship, some of you know the history between King David and Jonathan, Saul's son. They were like brothers, and they had a deep love for one another. And I want to tell you something, David knew that Jonathan was dead, but he didn't know that there was a son of Jonathan still out there somewhere. And so when Ziba mentioned the name Jonathan, I'm going to tell you something, all kinds of compassion just flew up inside of King David. 